Lori Rubin is an opera singer and a teacher and just an amazing individual. She was born blind, but she didn't let her disability stop her from achieving really amazing things and being part of wonderful programs and wonderful performances. I guess part of the reason why we're creating this documentary is so that we can learn from other people's experiences and, and, how, and how they've overcome challenges. Regardless of whether Lori's blind or not, she's just an amazing artist. It's not defined by her disability. It's just, as she put it, as a, it's an obstacle to achieving her goal, but we all have different obstacles. And, and maybe Lori can act as an inspiration to us that may or may not have a similar situation and we can overcome whatever obstacles we have in our own lives. So I thought Lori would be an excellent addition to the Hawaii Wisdom Project. Well, you know, it's so funny. I think people expect me to say that the challenges I'm facing today are uh, blindness related. And um, in a sense they are, but not directly. You know, blindness to me, it's a nuisance. It, it's definitely, I call it a logistical disability, which means that when you walk into a room um, and let's say um, people are hanging out eating cookies and, and drinking stuff or, you know, doing whatever. You walk in and you don't obviously know where everything is and everything's laid out. Um, but you know, there's ways to work around that. But so I call it an, a pain in the ass kind of disability, you know, and that it's just, it's, you just don't, it's, it, you don't know where things are located and, and you have to figure it out and there's ways to adapt. But in terms of my emotional well-being, um, I'm a very happy, very, very happy person and I feel very lucky to have the life that I have. Um, so my blindness has never been direct cause for sadness, but I think the challenges that I face um, as a person who is in the arts and wanting to get out there and get jobs, um, especially as a freelance kind of an artist like a singer, what's frustrating is that people um, still are placing limitations onto me that they don't even know that I have. So for example, <laughs> I was going to be in an opera uh, recently, but then somebody vetoed that decision because they said, oh, no, we're worried about liability, we're worried about her falling off the stage, you know? <laughs> and, you know, I've navigated my kitchen for 30, 34 years. It's like, you know, I'm not going to be a liability because I know how to work around my disability. And so I would say that my biggest challenge is making other people okay with my life and not having them resist when it is possible for me to get the jobs that I know um, are possible for me to have. So um, I have to work triply hard to get, um, I think, people to see me as normal. We all are told you have to be better than everybody else because people are going to place stereotypes on you. So you have to be even better than the best person so that people will want to hire you. And it's an extreme amount of pressure to put, have to be put under because under whose metric system are we supposed to measure that, you know, and it's so personal. Um, but I think in a way, having that challenge and, and knowing that I do have to be better, it's always made me a better person in general. It's always made me think, um, try to be more compassionate. It's, it's made me feel um, like I've tried to adjust myself and, and you know, just believe in myself and, and always try to, to be better against my own um, system of measurement. And um, I would say that in itself um, is the largest challenge because I know that I, I mean, I know for sure that sighted people in my position um, have been able to make it further faster and um, I'm not bitter about it in the least. I mean, I know that if I could see, I would have no idea how a blind person functions, but it certainly is a, um, it's an obstacle and it's one that I have to figure out constantly how to work around. I would always tell people starting out, believe in your mentors. The mentors are the people who are going to help you move forward. Um, you know, if people offer you constructive criticism who aren't necessarily your best mentors, it's great. You can take it with a grain of salt and you'll probably grow from it. But never ever believe the naysayers. Never trust them because they don't understand what you have to offer to the world. And it's interesting, I was having my kids today do a report on their favorite singers and uh, one person did a report on Kelly Clarkson. And um, she had said in her research that um, Kelly Clarkson was rejected by producer after producer and um, you know, eventually she won American Idol and now has this amazing career. So you can never trust the people who reject you because look, you could have this amazing career um, and you can shine in so many ways, but if it's not the right fit, it's not worth forcing it. It's not worth beating yourself up for not 
being the favorite of, of whoever it is. So I always tell people, always, always look to your mentors. Those are the ones who are going to move you forward. And I also tell people to believe in yourself. Um, life is not easy. You know, my mom always makes the joke, and I think it was from a comedian, you don't get out of this life alive, you know. <laughs> but it's not easy. But the great thing about life is that if we didn't have challenges, we wouldn't realize um, what joys there are. We would just take it all for granted if everything came easily. So I think that the most important thing in the world is to believe in yourself and to be able to move yourself forward through thick and through thin. Um, and when people tell you no, um, that should give you all the more chutzpah to, to say yes to yourself and make, make it even fight harder for what you want. And I think that the third thing is just to keep doing whatever you can to pursue your dreams. There's always going to be obstacles in your way. Um, you know, for me, I've had people say, oh, you know, opera is going to be too visual, it's going to be too hard for you on stage. And um, I've taken what they said and, and um, have said, okay, well, if I'm not doing opera, I'm going to do concert work. I'm going to do in concerts all over the world, and that's what I'm doing now. But then when the person comes around and says, I believe in you in an opera, I would like to see you in an opera. And that's happened many, many times where, where people have envisioned me in an opera and made it work. And so you'll just find the people and the places and the, and the reasons for you to be able to do the things that you should be able to do. So if it means taking more voice lessons or whatever it is, taking more dance lessons or doing whatever it takes to build upon your strengths, um, those are really important. And that leads me to the last thing is I would say know your strengths. Because if you're weak at something and you keep trying really hard at something that you're not good at, you're just going to keep beating yourself up. But the, but the thing is, if you're strong at something, that is the way to get to where you need to go. Because, um, you know, I'm definitely not a good dancer. <laughs> and I never have been. But I knew I was a good singer. And, um, and that did not really stop me from getting into um, the performing arts. And, and I, you know, I ended up doing opera. And um, that's what I'm strong at. So we all just need to find where our niche is and, um, and go towards it. And then the funniest thing is, I always tell people, along with believing in your strengths, is sometimes what people perceive as your biggest weakness or your Achilles heel ends up being your biggest strength. So for me, um, <clears throat> maybe blindness is a weakness. It's not, I mean, I'm not perfect, you know? I'm not the package that everybody expects when their baby with 10 fingers and 10 toes comes out looking, looking like. But at the same time, my blindness has given me such a perspective on life and it's given me um, compassion. It's, it's gotten me to be sort of a motivational speaker to a lot of people who face challenges and say, hey, listen, you know, we can do this. And if you're forced to work around obstacles a lot, if, that, if that's sort of your life path, um, you become a better, uh, a stronger person, a more resilient person. And uh, so always realize what your Achilles heel is and see if, how you can make that and turn that into your strength. I would just say to people, um, sometimes having an entrepreneurial spirit is really good. And I know a lot of the people you're interviewing are entrepreneurs. Because the thing is, we can all try to get a job, and we can all, uh, you know, get our nice little healthy insurance packages, and you know, feel, you know, feel stable. I know a lot of people really want that, but honestly, in my case, that didn't really work because people were so afraid to hire me. So I had to go out there and say, I'm going to make my own path. So I think there are a lot of people out there who are lost because they think they don't fit into the traditional path. And so being entrepreneurial, that doesn't mean that like you have to start your own business, but, but just think outside the box and think, where do I fit into this world? Where do I fit into my, um, where is my value? And um, figure out how to do that, whether it be, oh, I'm gonna be a great life coach, or I'm gonna be, um, I'm gonna start my own recital series, or I'm going to um, uh, sell insurance, or whatever it is. You know, whatever it is, it's, it's really helpful to know how to start on your own if you are having a hard time finding a place, a home, in a way. And uh, so entrepreneurship definitely helped us with starting Ohana Arts and um, uh, getting our feet wet in this, um, you know, in this industry in a way uh, here in Hawaii. And um, we had had experience from that being in New York. So um, an entrepreneurial spirit, I think, and taking risks, taking risks is really, really important. I would just say that believe in your story because it's interesting. And um, there's also going to be about a million other people who relate, even if it's not their exact same story. Everybody has a universal experience um, of isolation and um, uh, triumphs and tribulations and all kinds of things. We all have universal struggles and goals and dreams. Mm -hmm.